Section 76 of 1,000 Things Worth Knowing. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Russell Newton. Section 76. Temperature of the body. The normal body temperature is 98.4 degrees Fahrenheit. When it is higher, the patient is supposed to have a fever. Temperature usually rises in the afternoon, being one degree higher than in the first part of the night or in the early morning. It gradually falls from midnight to six or seven o'clock in the morning. The temperature of a child frequently rises two degrees from slight causes. Every family should carry a clinical thermometer. Bodily temperature should be taken by holding it in the mouth under the tongue for two minutes. Temperature under 101 degrees indicates a slight fever. Under 103 degrees, a moderate fever under 105 degrees, a high fever. When the temperature rises two or three degrees above normal, send for a doctor at once. Temperature of the sick room. 68 degrees Fahrenheit is a good average temperature for the sick room. In certain diseases, the average temperature may be lower, and for throat or chest affections, it should be higher. When the patient is being washed or dressed, the temperature should be kept at about 70 degrees. Toothache. If the nerve is exposed, or nearly so, toothache may be cured by placing in the cavity a small piece of cotton soaked in creosote or oil of cloves. If it continues, consult a dentist. Transporting the wounded. Great care should be taken, because the slightest carelessness is likely to cause intense suffering. A four-handed seat may be made by two persons, the hands of each one clasping one of the wrists of the other, and two ordinary men can easily carry a person of average weight. A stretcher will carry the patient in a horizontal position if the persons carrying it place their hands under it. A stretcher may be made of boards, over which are placed coats or shawls, or a blanket may be fastened to two stout poles. If no poles are handy, a shawl tightly held by two persons will do, but great care should be taken to keep it tight. A window shutter is generally available. The sufferer should be very carefully placed upon the stretcher and had better be lifted by several persons, by two at least. The bearers of the stretcher should not keep step. The opposite feet should put forward at the same time to prevent swaying of the stretcher and the rolling of the patient. Never carry the stretcher on the shoulders. Carry the patient feet foremost, except when going uphill. In case of a fractured thigh or leg, carry the patient head first when going downhill. Ventilation. The sick room should never be without fresh air. Impure and close air breeds disease and encourages illness. Fresh air should be introduced constantly and steadily. The windows may be lowered at the top or patented ventilators used. To change the air, open the windows in an adjoining room and then open the door between the rooms. But the fresh air in the adjoining room should be warm before it is allowed to penetrate the sick room. By swinging the door back and forth, the air will be fanned in. Do not maintain the erroneous impression that cold air is pure because it is cold, for cold air may be as foul as warm air. Night air is not dangerous. The patient must breathe night air or closed-in day air, and closed-in air rapidly becomes foul. Vomiting. Lie down and hold small pieces of ice in your mouth. If it continues, consult a physician. End of section 76.